So good morning or afternoon, everyone, from wherever you might be. Thanks for being here. Um, I do appreciate it. Today we're talking about moving averages and use of moving averages, and everybody's going to talk about this a little bit differently. But um, as 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 much as I am kind of a, an overall hater of, of indicators, um, I still find really good use in moving averages, and and I think um, they're very handy to have on your chart because everyone in the industry is looking at it. You walk into you walk into any big firm's trade floor, floor and there's going to be moving averages on a chart. Okay? And it is um so universal that one of the reasons the market will move around moving averages is because so many people are using it. Okay, it's kind of universally accepted and everybody's using it. Now, there tends to be an awful lot of discussion sometimes as to, okay, what's the best moving average? And and I got to tell you guys, there there's no such thing um, as the best uh, moving average. Remember, we get caught up sometimes in some ridiculous things and that um, whether it's a simple, whether it's an exponential, whether it's a front weighted, um, you know, whatever, um, just pick it, stick it and use it. Okay. Um, and just use it um, consistently. That's more important than anything, because let's talk about what a moving average is. It's, you know, if you got a 50 day moving average, it counts back 50 days, averages all the days together, divides it by 50 and puts a, a mark on the chart. And every day that passes, a new one comes on and one drops off and we put another mark on the chart. All it's doing is doing is showing us price or progression. And here's the thing, guys, it's the same thing if it's a simple moving average doing the exact same thing or an exponential moving average. The exponential moving average just puts a little bit more weight on the current price versus the price falling off the backside of that 50 days. So there's nothing about these that, you know, we get, I, I just find it amazing how many people um, get concerned. Well, are you using the, you know, the closed price? Are you using, what price are you using? really doesn't matter just put it on your chart use it and stay consistent with it and you're going to find really great results trading around averages now you guys know that the strategy that i trade and that i teach all the time is the 3-8 trap and all the 3A trap is, is a couple of moving averages. Okay, that's that's all it is. And um, the trendinator that I have in here is nothing more than the 17 exponential moving average. So I've got three exponential moving averages in here, and that's what I trade by. Okay, now it's it's not trading the moving averages themselves, I'm trading the price. And I do think that is hard for a lot of people to learn um, trading price versus the moving average because we we tend to always fall back to this idea, well, I need something to cross over. That's the signal. But that really has never been a good quality signal in a trade. Um, oftentimes, those crossover signals create a high-risk trade go to enter that position. I want low risk trades when I put on positions. But I'm, I'm going to show you a few things here in moving averages that um, are just truly awesome um, in helping you see um, a market change, a market shift, um, a stock shift, 
something like that, that um, are very, very common patterns in the market. Now, I actually learned this from a guy by the name of David Elliott. I don't know. Some of you probably remember David Elliott. David Elliott was quite a technician, and um, he taught me what's what he called map, map patterns or moving average patterns. Because if we were to take price off of you know any moving average chart, moving averages create patterns. Patterns that repeat themselves over and over and over. And you know, a pattern that you will find, we, we call it the blue ice failure. Um, stocks that that fail a 50-day moving average. You know, we have a 50-day moving average on the chart. And the stock drops below, rallies back, finds that as resistance and fails. The David Elliott of, of the world would say, if this is the 50-day and the 200-day is down here, the moving average pattern would mean at a very high probability, a stock that fails at the 50 will seek out the 200-day moving average. And that happens over and over and over in the market. If you take Rick's rounded bottom breakout, it's a moving average pattern. Rick is looking for a 50-day moving average that's down here and a 200 moving average that's up here. Okay? And when we see that price move above the 50 and hold, then we have a higher than normal probability that that stock will rally to seek the 200-day moving average. Okay? And those patterns will happen with any moving average. It doesn't matter if you make this a 30 and this a 50. Okay, it doesn't matter. When we have moving averages on the chart, we can look at price action and how it trades within that price action to be pretty clear. And you can see trend changes in directions from those moves. So if we just use just a, a modest amount of thinking here about a short-term moving average like the three exponential, if the three exponential, the red one here, this or uh, it's probably showing, I think it's pink or something showing up for everybody. Um, if the three is below the eight, that's showing weakness, right? The three exponential moving average can't stay above an eight exponential moving average. So there's weakness coming into that trade. The opposite is true. If the three comes above the eight exponential and holds above the eight exponential, we have long buy signals that set up there. We have short sell signals that set up here. Okay, and it doesn't matter if it's a three and the eight, it's, it's the same thing. As long as there are two opposing moving averages, they will do the exact same thing. I still have a, a, a sort over here for stocks that I, that, I ha that I have on a list. And the sort is a stock trending above the 34 EMA. That's what that is, the 34 EMA. The stock trending above the 34 EMA 20 days consecutively. I, I'm Because I'm, I'm a trend trader. I only want to trend. And I have found that if we can get a stock above the 34 EMA and it can stay up there, we're likely going to hold a trend for a period of time. Okay. And I don't, it, it's fine if you use the 17. Doesn't matter. You can use the 17. 17 is just a little bit tighter on a trend. So when we look at, at price action on a chart, if I eliminate I'm going to turn on the 17 EMA here. Okay. The trendinator, Rick calls it the trendicator. Um, 
all it is is showing us trend. Price is staying above. And we can get great information out of just following those moving averages, whether or not we're overbought, oversold. Um, we've pushed a stock too far too fast. Okay. One of the common things on the round of bottom breakout that we look for is we look for a stock that has really been pushed down. Go to the round of bottom breakout. We look for a stock that's really been pushed down. And then we start to round back up. Pfizer. Okay. Now, in that movement, if I shut off the price, you can see we're getting the same relationship between moving averages as we do on any other chart. When we get moving averages, our short-term moving averages, the, the 8 moving up, crossing over the 50, okay, we've got a 20 moving up, we've got a 34 moving up, and they're all bunching together. That's giving us a clue that this direction has probably changed. Stock direction has changed. Okay. And then price above the 50, we know the round and bottom breakout. We're going to seek the target of the 200 day. So when you um, when you look at these patterns, when you, we start to group moving average, averages together in a reversal from up to down or down to up, we start bringing all of these moving averages into close proximity, called the moving average squeeze. So how many in here would say you struggle with support and resistance in trading? For those of you that struggle with support and resistance and you're questioning a trade, if you have a group of moving averages, price has moved over this and holding and buyers are stepping up and you're concerned, is this really going to be good or is this, look at these moving averages showing you confirmation that all these moving averages are trying to show support. Okay. They're trying to show support. And if we can combine that with the price action, proving to hold those moving averages, and what I mean by that is avoiding the crossover trade. Let me, we'll just talk about that. But just, just the price crossing up over the 50 doesn't mean anything unless it can hold above the 50. Because we've all seen those charts, right? Where we we zoom up, we cross over, right there, crosses over. Oh my gosh, it's bullish, and then it just winds back out. No, it has to stay up there. It has to hold. So you want to avoid that crossover. You want to see the price prove itself. It pushes up here, proves to hold, and you want to see buyers stepping up to prove that they're willing to support the stock here. You combine that with these moving averages underneath and you have a, a powerful combination of support. Okay. But you don't want to anticipate it. So when I put price back here on Pfizer, you can see what's happening here. Pfizer went up above the 50 and then drifted back below. It had that same problem that could have occurred right here. It didn't prove to hold. Well, now we're crossing back up here trying to hold. So you can see this pattern is starting to develop very, very bullishly in the chart. And if this were to rest and, and, and hang in here for a little bit longer, then this gives us a pretty good example of price support in the chart. You combine that with the price action over here, We've got a trade that could be setting up 
with a nice opportunity. Now you may look at this and say, I don't like Pfizer, and that's that's perfectly fine. I don't that's not a problem. But you want to have those things combine. You don't trade off of moving averages. Moving averages provide you a zone for a trade. You trade the price action on the moving averages. Okay. So when you think about whatever, I don't care what moving averages you use, people get kind of carried away. As a matter of fact, I've got a chart on here where it was really carried away, and this is called a guppy chart. This was in, um, invented by a guy by the name of Daryl Guppy um, out of Australia. And all it is is a group of moving averages. Okay, But you can see the patterns that these are developing. These salmon colored lines are the longer term moving averages, the 30, the 35, the 40, the 45, the 50, and the 60. Okay, and notice that well, I've got one weighted heavier, the 30. Okay, the 30 is the, the shortest one of the long term averages. And notice in here that it is now crossed over all of the shorter I mean the longer term moving averages. It's crossed back over. So we've got this big group of averages in here squeezing together, showing that support chart. The same thing is true up here of the 3, 5, 8, 10, 12, and 15. I have the 15 weighted just slightly heavier. Okay. And it's providing that support in here of the shorter term averages. All right. So you can put massive groups of moving averages on the chart, and you can see that it's giving you clues for price action. When you get a group of them like these salmon colored ones here, see how they cross down? And see how they just kind of all tied together right there. I call it roping up. They, they just look like a rope wound together right here. It provided extreme resistance for that stock to move up. Okay, just couldn't do it. But now look over here. The opposite is true. Our longer term moving averages are roping up in here, providing support. That chart. And if you combine this with the price action of the chart, all right, I'm sorry, I'm on a 15 minute here. You combine that with the price action of a chart, it makes a big difference in the trade. So here we are, this is an hourly. You can see we're just crossing up on that hourly. Notice what happened when we did it over here and then the the short-term average is held above here. We roped up right here. Up we went. Right now on this hourly, we're just trying to make that transition cross. On the daily, it's still a little bit ambiguous here, right? We did get above our 60-day in here, excuse me, our 30-day in here, and our short-term moving averages have moved up and pulled back, they're trying to hold. And now the question is, can we have enough energy to push out? That's why we wait for the pullback, that's why we wait for the hold, and that's why we wait for buyers to show us that they're willing to push it up. Okay. Now you don't have to use all of these moving averages to get the exact same thing. I use the three and the eight. And I'm, I'm here to tell you, you can trade a chart like this and make really good money because I've made a career out of doing it and just doing the simple thing and that is the moving averages are showing us that we're grouping up for price and then I just look for the buy signal to occur. Okay, The price is holding in there and I'm looking for price to occur. Okay, 
Other things that you can really learn from moving averages like this, this is a 34 EMA. And when we pull this far away, look for the snap back up. When we stretch short-term moving averages away from long-term moving averages away, then price snaps back the other direction. Okay. That's why we need that proof of hold. When we stretch up like this, if we can't hold, we snap up here and then come right back down. We need that proof of hold. And now we've got something we can work with. Chart. Um, I think... I think HRC is was also an APA. I'm still an APA um, for half my position, but APA is nothing more than that trade. Right now, I think the APA is up. Uh, let me check it just really quick. Right now, it's up 19%. Um, I closed half of it yesterday for 25%, and earlier today it hit 28% up just because those patterns in here exist. Okay. So when you look at moving averages, you can also tell when we've overextended a move to an upside. So when we take a look at a stock that's really, really stretched out, let's look at Altria right now. Anybody think by looking at those moving averages, there's a high probability that this is going to pull back or consolidate at a minimum? Just like the snap back that occurs when we get too far extended away on the downside, it does the same thing on the upside. We get too far extended away and then we come back. So looking at those charts, you can see these whips that occur. This is unproductive in trading this because too many times we whipsaw up and whipsaw right back down. It's when we whipsaw up and hold a higher low or whipsaw down and hold a lower high. Then we can get productive trading. So break down, come back up, stay underneath here. There's a short trade. Okay, and if we look over here on the longer term moving averages, it's going to show us the same. We're very, very stretched away from the 50 day moving average here. It's not a normal thing to see in the market. When we stretch away from the downside, we look for the snap back up. When we stretch away to the upside, we look for the snap back down. Okay. Those patterns are very, very common in the market and they repeat. And it doesn't matter, really doesn't matter what moving averages you use. It doesn't matter if they're simple. It doesn't matter if they're exponential. Okay. All it's doing is showing us, you know, um, oversold and extension. It's showing us that it's holding support or they're holding resistance. In the chart, um, I know I called a trade that was pretty unpopular with a lot of folks at the time I called it, but you might have saw it in the morning prep videos. I was pointing out the head and shoulders pattern that had shown up here, and we broke through the 50 and couldn't hold it, and right there's the blue ice failure. And what did we do? We went down to the 200-day moving average. We held at the 200-day moving average and then failed the 200. Another moving average pattern occurring. Okay, where we're pushing those averages around in here in these charts, and we can see them showing up all over the place in these patterns. If I put a 500-day moving average on this chart, 
show you this. I'm going to do just a simple and I make it a 500. Make that a uh, moving average. Okay. The same things will be true here. That possibility, once we break the 200, we can go to the 500. Happens a lot. A lot. Okay. So those moving averages are providing us patterns. When you see all of these moving averages, these longer term moving averages come together, and we actually hold a higher low, oh my goodness. Got a great equation for an upside move. Notice here in Apple, we're getting told something here pretty important in Apple right now. 50 cross down through the 200. They call that the death cross. They call the 50 crossing over the 200. Okay, the golden cross. Okay, that's the death cross. And the high probability that we're going to see this 500 day moving average is in play. Okay, so by reading moving averages and combine it with, um, combine it with um, price action, we can have very powerful tools to, uh, first off, show us where we're getting support or resistance, where that trend lies, and then look for the price action for your entries that trade. You're holding puts on, on Apple? Nice. Got some bad news today on the, from them, too. They're being sued by the Justice Department for Monopoly. Yeah. So, a lot of pressure coming in there on Apple. So, you can see how those moving averages, when you kind of group that up. Anybody getting anything out of this? Is this making sense to you guys? Because I find moving averages to be very helpful and descriptive in telling me when something has changed. Good, good. When that, when that shift has changed in a chart, when something has occurred to push a stock in a different direction, and then if I get a company price action pattern that shows me proof that the that the institutions are willing to hold the stock at this price when they start pushing it a little bit higher I want to be in it so we did a very similar kind of thing here with BMY here just recently in RWO and there's the pattern guys right there push above the 50 we pushed above before and couldn't hold Push above the 50 and hold. Didn't quite make it to the 200 before the pullback. Okay, it's not usually not normal that we go straight up. You usually have to work yourself up there. But there's the pattern right there in the round of bottom breakout. And um, it's nothing more than a moving average pattern. The squeeze is in there. If I go back here to my guppy chart on that BMY, see the pattern? Short-term averages cross up through the longer term. We start to group up. And look what's happening right now. Why I'm still holding a small position of BMY. Well, actually, still holding the whole position in BMY. Um... Oh, wait a minute. No, I took some profits on it. That's not right. I took some profits on it. But I'm holding it. See how the longer terms are roping up now? If we can hold this price support in here, BMY has every reason 
to potentially move on higher because when we break those big trends right there, that's what we do. When we break them to the downside, that's what we do. And it repeats over and over and over. Even on this pull, small pullback here, we break above and hold, and then we go up. Over and over and over, the pattern repeats. Okay? Just over and over and over. Okay, I, I mean, William, I think, I think you know this. Um, resistance is right up here. It may be even the underneath side of that. We may be at it right now. Where's the support? Well, the nearest support that you can find in this chart is all the way down here. That's a parabolic run. Now, you can gain support off the trend and try to work the trend. And you can see in the short-term chart, the move back to the moving averages, right there, three stayed above the eight, buyers step through. There's the trades that I look for. Okay, so as long as that trends holds in there, I will say it's getting extremely extended and probably going to go through a pullback or a substantial, I mean, substantial consolidation or a substantial pullback here before too long. And one of those reasons is because we're pushing into a big area of congestion. Take that further back, huge area of congestion. It's going to rest. We do it on this, there's the patterns, cross up, hold, it moves. If we look at it here, price gets above the 50, holds, we move on higher. And it just repeats that stuff over and over and over, both upside and downside in any chart. Um, so when you're looking at these moving average patterns, um, when you're looking at a chart, make sure you check out those patterns. When we see a stock um, crossing through to the upside, then be willing to wait for that, that hold trade to provide that, um, that entry. And for those of you who trade um, longer term, it works exactly the same exactly the same if you do intraday charts it works exactly the same i trade the only thing i day trade guys is a is a um, dow jones e-mini futures chart it's the only only day trading i do i just reported to everyone today so i can tell you all i so far this year i'm up um nineteen thousand dollars um trading futures and notice what I trade. I trade the three and the eight. And I just look for repeating patterns. Three crosses down below the eight. Three consolidates there and the three can't go above the eight. There's a short. And you just repeat the same process over and over and over. Three crosses over the eight. It holds. There's a long. Same thing occurs here. This is a pullback. Eight pull, three pulls back to the eight. Three stays above the eight. We move on higher. 
I do it on 333 tick charts. I do it with everything that I trade. Moving averages are very, very important to me, but you have to remember, and by the way, look at the short right there. Three cross down through the eight, held, there's the short. It varies. I mean, think about it. every chart's different, Jerry. Every chart's different. It depends on how far it extends above. You know, if you take the example of Mo, how long is that going to take to rest or consolidate that? Could be months. Okay. If we take a look at something like BMY, how long did it take? Crossed up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days or something in there where it rested. Set your price alert and let the trade work. They vary in time based on how the price action, you know, and in the, in the circumstances of the market, they're always going to be different. You can have charts that show you a one day pullback and then it bounces right off of a, of a support area in the chart. Okay, those are hard to catch, but most of the time you're going to find stocks in a pattern like this um, that are going to hold several days. They're going to rest. They're going to quiet down. Yeah, so it, it really depends on how the stock moves, whether or not you're going to, to find those patterns. What I can tell you is if you've taken the 3-8 trap or... or um, just watch the videos on YouTube and work through the details, you're going to find that it doesn't matter what chart you trade, okay, or what time frame you trade, the patterns continue to work. That's a weekly. That's a daily. That's an hourly. And the patterns repeat themselves over and over and over because that's what markets do. When you prove to hold, how do you know it's proved to hold? When we see buyers step up and push through, proof to hold. Okay, so you look for your entry in places like that. Okay, so it doesn't matter what time frame you like to trade, it's all the same. Okay, when we take a look at, um, Take a look at Mickey D's here and these marks I put on the chart on this rally. Okay. How many days? They vary based on the, the length of the move, the, the extension of the move. What you want to see, however, is you want to see that trend holding. When that trend fails, here, notice what we do. We go into a choppy zone. When we extend big in a chart, we tend to spend long periods of time resting or we go through a protracted pullback. So now we see here at McDonald's the opposite pattern occurring. We have that high risk here in McDonald's that this now continues to fail. Okay, if you look at it on the guppy chart, as we rally back up, see what's happening to the longer averages here? These are going to come into making a pretty big barrier. So if this even continues to rally, there's a high chance it pulls back. The opposite over here is just, this. there's the upside move and the hold. We go. Okay. Same patterns over and over and over. By the way, on Mickey D's, failure at the 50-day moving average. 
we went to the 200-day moving average. You guys see that? Moving average patterns repeat themselves over and over. Hold above the 50-day moving average. Go to the 200-day. So those patterns repeat themselves everywhere in the market because that's how price moves. And if we utilize um, moving averages to our advantage, we can see those changes in the price action of a chart and then start looking for the potential entry into the trade. And that's another thing that usually comes up, Jerry. Well, what's a good entry? Well, a good entry for me that gives me a low risk entry. That's one of the reasons um, I don't trade the crossover move. Because if I take a look at any chart that is crossover, it does the crossover up on my 3 8 trap, any chart that has done a crossover up right in here, if I try to chase that here, what if it does this, crosses up and fails? I took a high risk trade because I took the cross. My stop needs to be down here. And it's something that I did over and over and over. Let me, let me tell you that. I, this is a learned experience. Okay, where I would chase that crossover trade thinking like most everybody, that's crossing up, it's going to be great. And I would... I would almost invariably buy it at the resistance in the chart, and it would almost immediately pull back and punish me. Crossover trades on the 3A trap, only they have a win-loss ratio of 50-50. Okay? If you wait for the pullback and hold, They win at about 70%. And, and there's no magic, guys. My win-loss ratio runs 70% winners because I do the same thing over and over. Okay? So the pattern may vary, and the tighter the pattern is, the more I like it, like this one right here. That didn't produce very much, but I like a trade like that, or this one right here. That doesn't require me to have a big stop loss. If I chase this crossover, my stop loss has to be here, though. Now I've taken a high-risk trade. Just by waiting, I take a low-risk trade. I wait for proof that we can hold patterns. And in the 3-8 trap, let me just whether it's a 3A trap or whether it's uh, the bigger moving averages. Um, you know, when we look at um, McDonald's, okay, and the 50 on McDonald's, um, excuse me, not McDonald's, on Apple. The 50 on Apple is crossing down through the 200. Would you guys say that that means momentum, upside momentum in here has failed There's, or is continuing to fail? If you take that to a 3.8, go really tight in here with a 3.8 pattern. Get rid of all those lines. Okay, if the 3 stays below the 8, wouldn't you say the momentum is moving to the downside? The momentum has maintained short here. If the 3 holds above the 8, See, we crossed over here, we crossed up the 8, and then it failed. Okay, that's one of those 50% failures. So now if this moves down and the 3 stays under the 8, we'll have a short. And it'll win about 70%. So I love moving averages 
but I but I want to remind everyone that the trade is not based on the moving averages. The moving averages are helping me see a potential trade, see a potential trend, see a support or resistance, see an overextension, either up or down, so I don't get trapped. It's the price action pattern that makes the trade the trade. When you combine those two together, well, you know, you don't have to like what I do, and that's fine, um, but I'm living proof because there is there's nothing special about me. That's all I do, and I made a career doing it. So, yeah, I love this stuff. When you combine price action with some simple moving average work, what's the trend? Where's the support? Where's the resistance? And you follow that and look for low risk entry trades, you're going to make money in the market. And it doesn't require you to be any kind of superstar. Okay. Any questions on any of this, guys? Because I'll break away so John can get in here. Questions for a few minutes? Isn't it amazing when, I, when I'll, I'll talk about a moving average pattern and then I'll show it to you on a chart and you see how I just, boom, there it is. It worked. And it repeats itself over and over and over. Now, the only reason that happens is because, and that's how we know that everybody's using moving averages. Because when we see those patterns occur in charts and they repeat themselves so readily over and over and over, Okay, we know that everybody's paying attention to the same thing. Same price moves, repeats over and over and over. Okay, and by the way, um, since no questions, um, it couldn't have been that good. You guys got to have some questions, I would think. But when um, when you're thinking about um, different moving averages of different time frames. A three versus an eight, if we're going to be bullish, doesn't it, doesn't it just make sense, guys? If we're going to be bullish on a trade, the three has to stay above the eight. Otherwise, the momentum of that upside move has faded. The three is showing us that moving average cross down is showing us that the momentum of the upside move has faded and has that potential of completely failing. Right? Does that make sense? Every downtrend begins that way. Every downtrending chart will begin with something as simple as a three crossing down through the eight. And that failure, it, it, it can't rally back enough for that three to come back above the eight. And then we get the failure. Okay, so every trend change occurs that way. And by waiting to see if that momentum was strong enough to hold, if that momentum in here is strong enough to hold, the three above the eight, if those buyers start stepping in, we surge in that direction. That's our proof of trend. The momentum stayed to the upside. Well, now we've got the three crossed down through the eight. Okay, that momentum has faded. I don't want to be a buyer here. This could actually end up short and moving on down to continue on down here to this support area. All right. So when you look at those, it's just about following that momentum of the move. Does that make sense, guys? Something that, that I get, um, it's questioned an awful lot because, um, 
we tend to focus, and again, we tend to focus on crossovers. Um, we want the indicator to tell us when the trade is there rather than the price action telling us when the trade is there. And remember, we only make money when price moves. We don't make money when an indicator moves. Okay, so make the price show you the pattern that's being supported by the momentum of the move, and then you'll win more trades. The market, and and look for those those big patterns that occur, like McDonald's failing underneath its 50-day moving average here, or look for those stocks like Pfizer coming up through its not PFC, um, PFE coming up through its 50-day moving average and look for those moving average, those bigger moving average patterns that occur over and over in charts. Over and over in charts. Okay, just like when we crossed here, 50 crossed down through the 200. Well, there we go. It's the death cross. We're looking for the golden cross. 50 coming up through the 200. Okay. Looks like that. All right. Cool. One of these days I want to do some videos and break these up into small pieces, all these different moving average. And, and, and there is some moving average. I've got a moving average pattern video over on YouTube if you guys want to look for it. Um, um, so, well, yeah, um, <laughs> CP, you're exactly right, because what is MACD? <laughs> MACD is moving average convergence divergence. It's just moving averages. <laughs> So are they converging or are they diverging? When they're diverged, you're taking a high risk trade. When they're converged, you've got a moving average squeeze, right? That's all it is. So, all right, guys, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for listening. I appreciate it. John will be up next. Um, I still can't answer a question or two if you have a question, but um, you can have a break here. Uh, thanks, Ron. Thanks. That's, you know, one of the things I hated the most when I was learning is the inconsistency. Um, so much inconsistency um, from the exact same person. Um do what I say, not what I do kind of thing. Um, I do what I say. That's all I do. And and it's so simple that I think everyone can learn it. And it's just following the momentum moves of the market. And it doesn't require you to predict or anything like that. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm not good at a lot of things. But the things that I that are really important to me, I work to be really good at. And I know what works for me and what's made my career in trading, and I just do the same thing over and over. Same trade, different chart, a little bit different price action, over and over and over. All right, guys. I'll back away. There's John. Says he's going to give you a little bit of a break here. Um, Y'all take care. And I will see um, RWO, RWO folks back over there in the room for the close of the day. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.